everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. Nazis in the Jungle In the middle of the lush Argentinian jungle, explorers have found evidence of a secret Nazi base. Argentina was known as a pro-Nazi country during the 1940s. They were major Nazi sympathizers and helped many German high commanders in the war's aftermath. That's not to say everyone of Argentina supported this, but the government back in the days of World War II certainly did. There have always been stories about secret Nazi bunkers hiding deep in the Andean jungle far from prying eyes. And finally, researchers with the University of Buenos Aires have discovered one. Hidden in an isolated pocket of a provincial park in Teyucuare, three buildings have been found along with artifacts that appear to link whoever lived in the buildings to top Nazi leaders. Inside these strange jungle fortifications, the researchers found German coins, porcelain plates from Germany, and even items with swastikas. The mysterious site is located just 10 minutes from the border with Paraguay, and although the buildings could have been used by anyone, they seem to be linked directly to Nazis. We don't know who lived here. Rumors are it could have been Adolf Eichmann and his loyal Nazi friends trying to live in isolation. It's hard to say because the ruins are mostly destroyed, and other than the few artifacts, there's nothing else really of importance found inside. The research team stresses that the site could have been planned to be used by some other group than the Nazis. Its assumptions are not final. An article published in Argentina's Clarín notes that officials from the Simon Weisenthal Center and the Buenos Aires Holocaust Museum find the theory captivating, but will spare judgment until the findings are more abundantly accepted. Number 9. Maya Noblewoman Researchers who work for the Chiapas branch of Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History identified the remains of an ancient Maya noblewoman. She was found in the Palenque Archaeological Zone which was once a key Maya territory. The discovery was made while a new restroom area was being constructed on-site for tourists. As crews were digging to install the toilet, about six feet deep beneath the surface, the same distance people are still buried, they unearthed a grave. And in that grave, they found the skeletal remains of a woman. The ancient city-state of Palenque was important to the Maya Empire and one of their prime regional centers. The women buried in this grave probably died just before the end of the 8th century AD, pretty close to when the Maya Empire disintegrated. And because she was found in an extravagant tomb, buried with some artifacts made of obsidian, she was probably a woman of some renown. Her burial was far from simple. It includes a type of tomb known as a cyst which is a sturdy container made of carefully carved stone blocks. She may have been a member of the city-state's ruling elite, it could have been a lawmaker or some kind of government agent, or maybe the wife of someone of great importance. All we know is that she was part of the ruling class associated with the administrative body of this ancient jungle kingdom. Another clue was the presence of jade stone inlays on some of the woman's teeth. This type of inlay would have only been made available to people of high status, with the means to pay for superior medical and dental services. Along with the elaborate tomb, they also found signs that a stone workshop had once been in the same estimated location. In the ground above and around the tomb, they also extracted pieces of ceramic pottery and stone tools of several types. For now, the team isn't certain if there is any link between the other items and the tomb or the important women buried here. Number 8. Mad Honey there are over 300 varieties of honey that can be found across this beautiful planet, and yet one specific honey is far stranger than any other. It's also the most dangerous, and quite literally, the most insane. It's called mad honey, and it's a rare hallucinogen which can be harvested in mountainous regions such as those around the Black Sea and on the slopes of mountains in Nepal and Turkey. This honey is produced by bees who feed on a very specific species of rhododendron plant. Eating the honey in small doses can cause feelings of euphoria, while higher doses can cause major hallucinations and even loss of life. Even though mad honey is illegal in most countries, it's still harvested today, and some jungle dwellers still are able to eat it. The honey is redder and slightly more bitter in taste, and comes from the world's largest honeybee, Apis dorsata laboriosa. According to David Caprara from Vice News, who journeyed to Nepal to try this honey for himself, Two teaspoons gives a feeling similar to smoking a lot of marijuana. It's kind of body high. He said it makes you feel calm and warm with a funny tingling sensation in the back of the head. 
This happens not because of the bees themselves, but because of the rhododendrons. These types of plants contain neurotoxic compounds. When bees feed on the nectar, they unintentionally ingest these neurotoxic compounds, and through nature, they seep into the honey of the bees. And so, beehives throughout Nepal, or at least in this part of Nepal, are filled with liquid mad honey, one of the weirdest hallucinogenic substances in the world. While fascinated consumers in the US can buy mad honey from countries like Nepal and Turkey, it's probably a good idea to stick with the regular sticky stuff. There were a few experiences posted on the website of the nonprofit psychedelic research organization Arrowhead.org that didn't sound too great. And now for number seven, but first it's shout out time. Big thank you to Big Doug and Mandy Lynn Review for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to join the Origins Explained family. Number seven, sea monster in the jungle. A man named Chim Samrathi was strolling through the Cambodian jungle when he came across a sea monster. Not a real living, breathing sea monster, but a statue of one carved into a large rock. This man was wandering through the Phnom Kulin National Park in the province of Siem Reap. This isn't too far from the famous Angkor Wat, which is a temple complex in Cambodia and it's the largest religious monument in the world. As he was wandering, he came across the face of a massive beast, known to the Khmer as a Makara. It's a legendary sea monster from Hindu mythology, but its presence in the middle of the jungle seemed quite absurd. Archaeologists were called to the site the next day, where they identified the statue as being from the 6th century. That makes it roughly 1,500 years old. The rest of the sea monster was in fragments, broken into 13 pieces scattered across the jungle floor. Strangely, archaeologists couldn't find anything to suggest there had ever been a temple close by. There was no evidence to show any other structure had been here, meaning the statue was by itself. 1,500 years ago, somebody carved a sea monster out of a rock in the jungle, and experts don't have a clue why. Number 6. Maya Divination Calendar In Guatemala, scientists have just discovered the oldest evidence of a Maya calendar on record. The discovery was made deep in the Central American jungle and consists of only two small fragments of stone. These fragments were once part of a mural, and when pieced together, form a Maya notation called Seven Deer. The two fragments of the mural date to around the year 300 BC and 200 BC. This is according to the official radiocarbon dating done by the scientists who discovered it. Judging by the date, we can safely say this was a Maya divination calendar, something which was also used by other cultures of Mesoamerica. Even the Aztec used this kind of calendar, and the modern Maya use a similar calendar today. Communities of Maya people in Guatemala use the old divination calendars as a way of keeping connected to their ancestors and preserving their history. The fragments were discovered at the site of San Bartolo, which is located somewhat close to the ancient city of Tikal. Only the site of San Bartolo was only discovered by modern scientists deep in the remote jungle back in 2001. Researchers believe it was a major city between 400 BC and 280 AD. The fragmented pieces of the mural form a deer glyph underneath the Maya symbol for the number 7. We know it's old because the deer glyph was actually drawn using a deer head instead of just writing the word deer, like the Maya did with later calendars. This proves the artifacts are from an archaic calendar, one of the first ever used by the Maya to keep track of ceremonies. Number 5. Ruins and the Bolivian Amazon Unbelievable ruins of Amazonian settlements have recently been found in the jungles of Bolivia. These settlements were once home to a society of advanced humans living in the Amazon who practiced agriculture. These people enjoyed cosmology, had a surprisingly sophisticated understanding of the cosmos, and lived all throughout the jungle hundreds and even thousands of years before Europeans showed up. Archaeologists found 26 different sites spread across a large region in the north part of the jungle. This is further proof that the Amazon was home to massive settlements and extremely complex societies. According to archaeologist Heiko Prumers, we need to accept the fact that these parts of the Amazon were densely populated during pre-Hispanic times. There's just no denying it. Unfortunately, there's nothing left of these sites now except for the imprint they made on the jungle floor. Researchers only found them because they use lasers mounted on helicopters to scan underneath the canopy of trees. That was how they identified the lost settlements, which were active from between roughly 500 and 1400 AD. 
We don't know why these settlements were abandoned, where the people went, or how long exactly they had been living there. But the Amazon was a bustling place when the people suddenly disappeared and the jungle swallowed their cities. Number 4. The Janglot Jungle Beasts The Janglot is a humanoid creature that allegedly lives in the jungles of Indonesia. It looks like a small, mutated person. It was discovered in 1997 on the island of Java, and yet even all these years later, scientists aren't sure if the creature was a hoax or if it's a genuine being. But one thing's for sure, many Indonesians who live in the remote Javanese jungle believe it exists and that the creature has mystical powers. The creature can supposedly be found in all sorts of places, underground, in tree trunks, or even on the roofs of houses. It's only a few inches tall, maybe a foot at most, with spooky long black hair, extra long fingernails like wolverine claws, and vampire fangs. Some say the Jenglot feeds on blood and the owner has to feed it daily. Others say it can hide in a town and cause misfortune to those around it. And a few say the Jenglot is actually a man who had practiced forbidden magic attempting to gain immortality. Whatever the case, nobody has ever actually found proof that the Jenglot exists. Sure, dead Jenglots have been on display at temporary exhibitions in Indonesia and Malaysia, but these corpses have never been studied by scientists. Do you think they could be real? Number 3. Peruvian Walled City 1300 years ago, a mysterious culture in Peru inhabited a great jungle city. These people were eventually conquered by the Inca, and their names were lost to history. But now, explorers from the US and Peru have uncovered their strange walled city, the complex deep in Peru's Amazon jungle. It took a month of trekking through the forest, climbing up rainy hills and high craggy cliffs, and descending long, twisting valleys. But they finally found this city, once home to 10,000 people. The stone city is 3,000 meters above sea level. That's just a little higher than the Golden Gate Bridge is long. It's kind of like Machu Picchu because it's so high up. Only this city is still shrouded in jungle foliage. The place is enormous, made up of five citadels stretching over 101 square kilometers. That's about the size of San Francisco. It was once protected by high curtain walls, although now the place is in pretty rough shape. According to the researchers, the city was probably occupied by the Chachapoyas culture. They differed greatly from other Peruvian cultures in that they had fair skin. These people were extremely tall and preferred living in the jungle rather than near Peru's coastline. But before the Spanish ever showed up, the Inca and the Chachapoyas went to war, and the Inca won. Researchers also found a small Inca settlement within the borders of the jungle city validating they had probably conquered the place. Number 2. The Abandoned Jungle Hotel In Rio de Janeiro, in full view of the Atlantic Ocean, there is a massive abandoned hotel sitting in the tropical jungle. It hides in dense foliage, high on a mountain overlooking the sea. The building is known as the Skeleton Hotel, and it's been abandoned for almost 50 years. The construction of this creepy jungle hotel started in 1953. It was designed to be a luxurious tourist resort where foreigners could get a real slice of paradise outside the noise of the city. But after almost 20 years, construction was interrupted because the company went bankrupt. The result was 16 floors of empty rooms, unfinished walls, an elevator shaft with no elevator, and long flights of stairs that led to nowhere. The Skeleton Hotel, a somewhat primitive shelter in the jungle, quickly became a refuge for the homeless and the criminal element of Brazil. And while it's certainly possible to trek through the jungle and find this decrepit ruin in the middle of a tropical paradise, you just never know who else might be lurking inside. Number 1. The Monster of Belize 27,000 years ago, a thirsty giant ground sloth was wandering around in Belize. Back then, the country wasn't the hot and humid jungle it is today. That's because there was somewhat of an ice age going on, with most of the liquid on the planet locked up at the polar ice caps. Belize wasn't a jungle, it was an arid desert. And so, the giant ground sloth was having a really difficult time tracking down water to satisfy its thirst. It ended up coming across a deep sinkhole with steep walls just like a natural well. The sloth, which stood somewhere around 16 feet tall, about the size of a giraffe, leaned in close to take a drink, and that was when it fell in. 
drowned, and sank to the bottom of the sinkhole. Fast forward almost 30,000 years, Belize isn't a dry desert, it's a hot, sweaty jungle, but the exact same sinkhole is in the same spot. And in 2014, divers found the bones of our thirsty giant ground sloth fossilized at the bottom of the pool in Carablanca. They uncovered parts of a tooth, some pieces of bone from its arm, and a fully intact leg bone. Scientists believe giant ground sloths went extinct about 10,000 years ago, or 17,000 years after our thirsty sloth died. And since humans arrived in Central America about 13,000 years ago, that means there was a 3,000-year period in which humans and these giant beasts interacted with one another. Some scientists say it was human migration to the Western Hemisphere that resulted in the extinction of these giant, very slow, and very easy to catch animals. Thanks for watching! What mysterious creature from the jungle do you think might actually exist? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe and come back soon!